Yes, everybody, welcome back. My name is Stephen Alston. This is the Full Time Devils podcast today. Delighted to be joined by this little lot of absolute lunatics. We have got Shane, we have got Carl, and we have got John Shin, as usual. Time's it over there, John. Uh, it's actually 10 o'clock for once. I got to wake up, got, got a good sleep in. I don't have to wake up at 5 in the morning to be talking about Man United, so we good. Sure, but you don't love it. <laughs> uh, right, so we've got a few topics to discuss today. One of them uh, I didn't even know of until we started this call and then had to do a little bit of Googling, uh, which is De Lowe's on his way out. Uh, we've got Upper Meccano has been linked. Uh, Chelsea are in for Coutinho, supposedly. Weird one. Uh, and does that have an impact on uh, Sancho? We're going to be talking Pogba because it's the rules. Um, all sorts of stuff, as well as a couple of on this days because there's some belting ones. Where should we start, lads? Go on, go with the low. The low. All right. So the news is out of everyone's favourite reputable fucking shit rag, uh, The Sun, that uh, the low could be on his way. My initial take on this is they've seen that he's not played this season. No one's going to be like, that's bollocks. Um, and they've just found an open net and, and they've stuck it away. And no one's going to pull them up on it. It's 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 something that you could see happening. So it, it just feels like proper easy bullshit bingo. What do you reckon? Yeah, no, it's one of them, innit? It's, it's a shame though, Delo, because I like Delo. I think he's quality, but it's it's one of them, where, like you said, it's a free hit for anyone to when there's no news about. Uh, and unfortunately, Delo is you know, a Mourinho sign-in and we don't really suit his game anymore. Well, with, with Mourinho, we said chuck balls into the box, didn't we? And Delo's a really good cross for the football. So when we don't do that anymore, he's sur- sort of surplus to requirements because he doesn't really do the job that we need him to do. But hopefully he stays. And hopefully he is a bullshit story. But I like him, me. I do like him. I think he's a good player. Do you think he's, he's a good backup to what we've got with wan I, th- I think he is. I think we need him to challenge to challenge Wambazaka anyway. You don't want to get into the rut like a Luke Shaw rut where he got too comfortable in his position and, and come right off the boils. I think that's what happened to Luke Shaw. He was class when he came from Southampton and class for up until his leg break. Well, that's not an excuse, but then no one's ever really challenged him for his spot. So until obviously Brandon Williams come across and then uh, obviously took it for a few weeks off him. So I don't want Wambazaka to fall into that rut. So it, it, there's, there's loads of pros to keep him all over the team. Shame at Drekker. Um, with Delo, I, I, I do agree with Carl. I do like him offensively. Defensively, I, I, he's, he's kind of been found out. I like him going forward a lot because he's, again, echoing what Carl said, he's, he's, he's a great cross of the ball. But um, I've kind of been campaigning just to see, just to see if we could play him at the right wing back spot a bit more and sort of usher in Wan Bissaka as a right sided centre back. Uh, maybe with Lindelof and, and Maguire, just just to see how it goes. Because I know we tried Luke Shaw on the other side, just because I just no one gets past Wan Bissaka, so just see how it goes. And defensively, he's brilliant. Going forward, is not so great. Um, and and as as you said, as a, as an option off the bench to challenge Wan Bissaka, but then you've got Ethan Laird, who's I I think as well will be pushing. I really do. So um, to, to, to for a first team place sooner rather than late later. So. Um, yeah, it's, it'd be a shame if we did get rid of him. But like you said, Steve, you, you can see it happening very easily. John, I think Shane touched on a good point there, where he was talking about um, the, the option of playing three at the back. It seems like Holly does favour that formation in the bigger games. Would it help us be tactically fluid if we had the option where we can go, right, when when we go to three at the back, Delo, this is your time to shine? For sure. And um, having somebody like Delo gives us that option. You know, if we're going to if we're going to keep ourselves reserved to having one sort of starting quality capable uh, defender or right sided defender, if you will, and somebody like uh, Aaron wan Bissaka, I think it just doesn't make sense for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer to keep himself uh, thinned out in terms of options like that. And just to add what Shane and Carl was saying, you know, uh, Delo is still... Yeah, he's not sort of risen through the ranks and already like locked in the right back position as much as uh, Aaron Wan Bissaka did. But Aaron Wan Bissaka is one of the best defenders out there right now. I mean, he he defensively he's so solid. You know, you, you cannot get past him. Um, that being said, that that doesn't just necessarily mean that you write off to low and sell him. It just doesn't make sense for a club to operate in that fashion. You know, having him as a backup, having him to provide competition for somebody like Aaron Wan Bissaka. You know, competition isn't uh, isn't necessarily. Um, uh, healthy in, in in certain circumstances, but I think nine times out of ten for me, I think competition is always necessary in a squad to maintain that level, healthy level of balance and quality. And uh, Aaron Wan-Bissaka needs that. You know, Carl made a huge good point about 
that whole Luke Shaw scenario on the left side. You know, we want to make sure we have competition. We want to make sure that our squad is in tip top t- tip top shape with respect to options. So, it just doesn't make sense for us to get rid of him right now. I think a decently stacked squad should probably have uh, thirty players in it in reality uh, to cover you across all competitions. So obviously, you've got your first eleven. Your first eleven for me should be when I'm fit, I play. Uh, and that you know the, the type of player that is. Harry Maguire, is he getting rotated in and out? No, he's not. Is uh, Wan-Bissaka getting rotated in and out? No, he's not. Is Bruno going to be rotated in and out? Absolutely not. Everybody else, there's a bit of a question mark. Even Rashford, you know, depending on the tactical circumstance, Rashford might get rotated in or out. Uh, Martial could get rotated in or out uh, you, for each other, literally. Um there's no one outside of those few. I don't think you can probably make a case for Pogba, um, which would be valid. Uh, but outside of those, there's not really many players that you could say, um, when I'm fit, I'm starting. And, and that's that. Even Luke Shaw, probably the number one choice, but not absolutely definitely the number one choice. And I think you need your 10 outfield players need to be, if I'm fit, I start below that. You then have your rotational options probably people that are a bit more fluid in, in the positions that they can play, maybe fill two roles. And then beyond that, you have your fringe players. So your squad players should be the likes of Matic, Matomenei, um, probably Williams, people like that. Maybe maybe Williams even covers under the fringe. Uh, Igalo, you know, people that maybe Dan James, people that are going to come in uh, and you'll be confident in them doing a job. And then you want your fringe players that are going to feature up to five games a year. And that's what packs out of a squad uh, and I think United over the last few years, less so now, but over the last few years, we've been a, a very squad-focused squad and not a very first-choice-focused squad. Um, like if I said to you guys, totally blind, pick the Liverpool team for next weekend, if there was a game, pick the City team for next weekend, you're probably going to get, what, 9, 10 out of 10? Mm. With United? What, are, are you going to get nine or ten out of ten? It might be more like seven. So I think that's the you have to have a squad which is a, a clear hierarchy of who there is. You know, when Roy Keane was fit, was there any doubt that Roy Keane was playing? And if we don't have players of that magnitude, well, we should be aiming to get to having players of that magnitude. Now, obviously, that's well easier said than done by some knobhead on a YouTube channel. But ultimately, that's where you'd like the club to start aiming towards being. Um, Delo, he definitely fits in the rotational option for me. Um, unfortunately for Delo, this is a symptom of when you sign a player for a particular manager and that manager's gone five, six months later, that player can generally then just be deemed surplus to requirements. You know, if Delo is heavily seen as a Mourinho player and we don't play that Mourinho style, you know, it was Delo. Um, to be putting balls in towards Lukaku and for Fellaini and neither of them play for Manchester United anymore and we have strikers that aren't the greatest in the air, don't really lead the line in the same sort of way. What are we doing with him? Um, I think it'd be nice to have someone that has got a different style of play in him. Um, but if they can switch him up and, and as Shane mentioned, give Ethan Laird the opportunity because that's a five-star potential kid that we've got on our hands right there. Um and he's, he's certainly a much more accomplished defender than what you've got in um, in Delo. And going forward, honestly, I don't think there's much in it. And people will be like, oh, only because you've seen what Delo can do. I think if you'd actually really sort of seen what uh, Ethan could do. You know, Ethan scored 22 goals from left back um, in his under-16 year, and he would have been player of the year, but there was some kid called Mason Greenwood who yeah. was promoted halfway through the year who overtook him. I don't know what happened to him. Um, he's probably fell out of the game now. Uh, but but Ethan's a threat. Ethan's a threat with a ball at his feet and he's a threat defensively. So the, the only reason you've not seen Ethan is his, his injury record. Like a lot of kids coming through, he's not great. You know, Tuan Zabi probably should be a regular now, but injuries have put pay to that. Possibly even partially why we've, we've seen not as much as Angel Gomez as we want. Um, so you've got to have a little bit of luck in the injury department coming through. Um, Upper Meccano is another player that has been linked. Um, what's our thoughts on that, John? Unmute yourself, mate. It's well better when you can talk. 
Sorry about that. My, I have a mechanical keyboard. I, it sounds like I'm typing in like some like 1800 computer. Uh, I think Open Mechano would be a fantastic contrib- uh, addition to Manchester United. Um, financially speaking, you know, Manchester United have been one of the most capable yet unstable organizations in the world. I mean, we, we talk about the financial strengths, the, the commercial powerhouse, and yet always that something that coincides with that conversation is the debt. And the um, the amount, the lack of financial capability because of the debt that we carry and we continue to amass because of our wonderful ownership and whatnot. But um, the reason why I mentioned the finances is because uh, we want to be able to make sure that we sign a a, a big, strong addition like a, a, a marquee signing in somebody like Jaden Sancho. And we know that's going to take a hefty amount of money to lock him in, you know, regardless of the fact that he wants to join Manchester United, regardless of the fact that he has good relationship with the players, it's going to be difficult to... It's not. It's going to be difficult to bring him on the cheap, obviously, uh, given his quality and the and the situation with uh, Dortmund and whatnot. But uh, the reason why I mentioned that is because uh, that needs to be priority. Jaden Sancho needs to be priority. However, for me, perspective me, in my perspective, anything else besides Jaden Sancho, uh, the only person that gets an exception to that number two role is Upen Meccano. I think he also needs to take huge. I think Manchester United also needs to take huge priority. He's a fantastic ball playing uh, center uh, center back. Great defender, a huge, great eye uh, for a ball forward. I think last year, well, up until the canceling of the um, the uh, Champions League and all that jazz, uh, I think I believe. Why? What's happened? <laughs> I believe he was. I think he had the most passes into the final third by from a center back. I think he like eclipsed uh, Van Dyke and all these players. I don't. I still don't know if that stat carried on till the end, but. He's just a fantastic defender, and I think he is what we needed in Eric Bailly. But Eric Bailly is the player that's not quite really shown in terms of his uh, consistency. I think, and I also think that it has to do with with uh, the, his uh, injury record, which is unfortunate. But if we can sign somebody like Opa Meccano, I think that would be a fantastic, completed, more completed version of Eric Bailly in that sense. I think. He's not as ag- sorry. I'm sorry. Just to add, he's not as aggressive. Sorry, he's just not. He's not as aggressive as. Uh, uh, Eric Bailly, but I, th- you, I just didn't think need to say that. To be honest, <laughs> I just needed to add that there because some people are gonna be like, "Oh, John, uh, Eric Bailly is fucking crazy, bro. He goes in, tackles all day. He's fucking dribbles and does like flip flaps and shit." No, 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 that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying he would be a little bit more of a completed version of Eric Bailly, which is what we need. You mean you mean not as mental? Sure. Oh, that's basically yeah. <laughs> Thank you. That was there. You go. <laughs> <laughs> go on, Carl. What are you saying? To be fair, man, I don't really know much about him. I'm not gonna sit here and and, and talk shit because I I don't I, I don't watch. Leipzig, I, I, you know, I don't know much about him at all. I've seen you tweet saying he was on trial when he, at United a few years ago. Yeah, back. I don't know how many people know about that. I don't know how like inside that was, but I know Marcus played with him or against him. I think it was with him um, in a in a behind closed doors game. I think there were fifteen, the pair of them, um, and, and apparently it was class. Um, so. That happens on a, a far more frequent basis. Like, you know, Gabby Martinelli came and didn't fancy him. You know, Upper Meccano came and we didn't fancy him. People will see that as a negative um, of United's recruitment, but we don't know that Upper Meccano wouldn't have had the same trajectory Roshan Williams had if he came to United. Sometimes players have to go elsewhere to, to be able to reach their potential. And that it, it's difficult to reach your potential at a club like United, which is why the likes of Greenwood and, and Marcus doing what they're doing is mind-blowing. And Brandon, it's mind-blowing that they're able, with the pressure that's on at United, to come through and deliver. It's far easier to come through at Burnley or Southampton or, or Leipzig or Mönchengladbach or somewhere like that, where there's less pressure on what's going to happen and and you can come in and you can maybe take it a little easier. You have one bad game at United and there's fucking death threats on Twitter for you. So the, the pressure is unparalleled coming through anywhere. And I think sometimes that United, you, they can't sign everybody at, um, under 15, under 16 level. They have to make a squad. And they have to make a squad that they think is going to serve them the best. And once they get um, their squad, they try and bring through one player out of that squad. Bringing through two players in a squad is unheard of. Um, United have done it recently. United might in the, be in the process of bringing through one or two more. But bringing through even one a year is way more than most clubs manage. So not taking a punt on Upper Meccano... Okay, you can call it um, a mistake if if you want, but would he have developed the, to the level he is now with without the minutes that he's had? No, you know the same with Gabby Martinelli. Would he have developed if he'd have gone to a big club instead of Arsenal? 
probably not. So, you know, you've got all, there's, there's tons of these players all over the place that come and trial at United um, for a few weeks and the club, you know, makes a decision on them and you, you've got to say, we're looking at who we do bring through and the, the youth that we foster, they probably do know what they're doing. So, go on, as you're saying. And I was going to say, like, do you reckon that affects the transfer? Like, do you reckon we go in for him and he says, well, I know you turned me down last time. Do you reckon it affects him coming or, or do you reckon it's just that's like a nothing, nothing comment? <laughs> Um, I don't think it would affect. I, I could be wrong. I don't think it would affect him. No, I, I think he, if he, he might feel like he's got unfinished business here. He might not feel like the rejection was personal. Mm. You know, we we might have re- told him. I saw his agent, which I think was his agent, trying to do what agents do, say that he rejected us because of the situation around uh, the digs that the players go into. Digs are universal. If you're from Manchester, you have to go live in Diggs. It, it makes no sense, but them's the rules. You know, Marcus lived in Diggs all the way through high school from like 11, 12 years old. He's one of the youngest players to go into Diggs. Um, you know, the likes of Dion McGee, Brandon Williams, local Manchester lads live in Diggs. All the Irish lads, the Welsh lads, are, they live in Diggs. Everybody in the academy lives in Diggs. There's no exceptions. So if if that was one of the reasons why United said no or Upper Meccano said no to United, well, fine. But I, I don't know if it'll hold a permanent grudge. I guess we'll find out if he if he does or doesn't sign for us. Mm. You reckon? Do, do we do we need to prioritise a centre half though? In realistically, when we could we could get a, like a DM in. I don't know. I like I don't see us needing a centre half. Like, no, I think it's probably our best position. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, we're, we're quite strong at centre half at the minute with like Bay Maguire, Lindelof, and all that. So I think we could probably strengthen and spend the money elsewhere. Like, you know, like a Jaden Sancho and a central midfielder. Would probably benefit us more than an up and a Cano, but I, I, I don't know. It's 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 just, it's just a bit of a. We need strength in everywhere. Like strength and depth's key in it to to winning titles and trophies. So, it, like we could do with him, but I don't. Right now, right at this minute, to to press on from where we left off, I do. I, I don't see a centre half being one of the ones we need to focus on. Uh, just I'm sorry to uh, see. Uh, just to add in to what Carl was saying, you know, I completely agree. You know, I'm not sitting here saying that center back position is the the one that needs juicing up and the one that needs bolstering. I, mean, I completely agree in the sense that center back is very well established right now. But well, with the quality that RB Leipzig have, with the quality that uh, Julian Nagelsmann ha- has had in that squad, we need to start tapping them up. And somebody like Upa Meccano is somebody that just cannot be uh, left out of it. I think he ha- had some like. And Saints, uh, he played like 18, 50 minutes out of like a possible 1900 or something like that since his start. Like it's that is a maddening stat. Like the consistency, not only with his with respect to the quality on the pitch, but just the fact that he can stay fit. I mean, that's so huge. I mean, one of the reasons why we had such a difficult time in the center back position over the years was we never had a goddamn center back that was fit. You talk about Chris Smalling, you talk about Phil Jones, you talk about Eric Bailly. That's that's the limp that's the limp squad trio right there. They just mm. break their, they just tear something up every other day, you know? Like and now that we finally have some sort of consistency, it would be nice to add to that, just to really like perfect it. And you know, obviously with coronavirus and all that situation, it's gonna like I mentioned, it's gonna be a bit more financially difficult for us to do that. We can't dip into our transfer uh, uh, bank for Jaden Sancho and somebody like Koulibaly. I think that's just an insane figure. But if we can get somebody of quality and a bargain like Upa Meccano, I, ju- I think we have to go for it. It's just too much of a bargain to turn down, in my in my opinion. Yeah, the uh, the um, the game that me and Dave went to a few years ago, Upa Meccano was on a bench. I think he must have been. When's his birthday? He is. I think, I think he was probably eighteen at the time. He was on the bench. Um, Werner played, Kaita played, Sabitza played, Paulson played. So it's a team you probably recognise quite a lot of. Um, yeah. But yeah, Upa Meccano was on the bench. Shame what you're thinking. Get him. No. Colour Bali. Right. Put it put it this way. If you say Colour Bali this summer, most of us would say yeah. So in terms of Up Meccano, I'll look at it as okay, potentially, in terms of how good he is now, say another five years' time, is he gonna be on that level? So if you're gonna say yes to that question, can we pass on him? That's 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 one of the things, and I've I've seen I've watched him quite closely because I'm thinking a centre back starting in in the German league at 19 years of age. I'm you know that's that's not a done thing really. So, athletically he's got it all, but I think uh, to John's point, um, technically he's he is very very good, and in modern day football that's 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 massive, that's huge playing out from the back. So, um, 
I always put it in terms of that. I t- I try to make a comparison. Like we've got Kulabadi, who's at the other end of his career, so just be not not retiring, like, but he's in the peak of his powers. So if we're saying we got, we can afford to turn down uh, Kulabadi, can we? I I, I don't I, I don't personally think we can. But to your point, Steve, as well, it's, that's probably our strongest position. Mm. Um, but at the same time. I'd like to give another season because Bailly, when he plays, and to me, when you've seen Lindelof and Maguire play as a partnership, it's it's been decent. But when the, the, the couple of occasions you've seen Bailly with Maguire, I think it's been close to very good. And 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 I, I feel that they could develop a partnership and they complement each other a lot more, I feel, than Lindelof and Maguire do as a pairing. And then if you're putting, setting them up in the big games as a three at the back, as I touched on before, with having possibly um, Wan-Bissaka as part of that that free somehow, I, I, I think defensively we we could be very very strong and for a long time as well. So for me, um, I'd like to give not just by the opportunity, but Twin Zabi as well because he's been struggling with injuries as well. But to John's point again, we've been struggling with injuries with our defenders, centre backs particularly. They've got to play every single game really, uh, plus all the big games. Uh, if they're if they're available, because it's a partnership nine times mm. out of ten. So, can we, can we afford to miss out on a potential world class centre back? I think we need to give an opportunity for another season to buy and to Nzebi to see if they can take Lindelof's spot. Maguire's a captain now, so he's going to be starting game in game out. So for me, give give Bai and Twins Abi an extra season. They're both coming back from injury. I'd like if we're not going to give Twins a, an opportunity in the starting first first team, um, then I'd say learn him out elsewhere because ultimately he's in he's in his years, his adolescent years in terms of footballing, where he's going to learn a ton. So look it up at Makano. He's starting in 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 the German league. So for me. To if you're not going to start Man United, loan him out, but give by an extra season, see if he can take Lindelof's place, really. Yeah, I think the injury things is a nightmare for for both Bay and to Anzebe. Um, because I think both of them would have the opportunity at, at staking their claim at being a starting centre half somewhere, um, possibly even at United. And um and Bay when he plays, I, I think he's great. I think he's got so much character about him. Um, that I think it, he's just one of those infectious guys um, I, that I think he's liable to do something crazy. I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing. I think that's a good thing. When you center ass, you don't know what they're going to do. <laughs> <laughs> that's just you, Steve. You like that in our center pass. <laughs> it might be. It might be. I am a fan of chaos, and, and Bay brings a chaos. Rojo. You know. What about Rojo? <laughs> Well, do you know what? Bay and Rojo together, we was like, oh my God, oh this my is bananas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they, they were good together. Yeah, they were. They, they were good together. So, um, you know, I, I think the distribution side of Bay needs improvement. I think Tuan Zabi's got that over him. I think aerially, Tuan Zabi needs improvement. I think Bay's got that over him. I don't think either of them are the perfect centre half. Um, but there's just this, there's a character about the pair of them where you go, fucking hell. Like, if you if you didn't have Maguire and you had them two, you wouldn't be upset. You'd be like, okay, are they fit? Yeah, okay, sound. It's just a case of getting them fit. Um, and if we can get them fit, I think we're in for a good time. Um, Chelsea are linked with Coutinho. That clearly impacts on any potential Sancho move, you would assume. Um, because I can't imagine a world where Chelsea are able to sign both Coutinho and Sancho on top of signing Ziyech and keep everybody happy. As well as, um, I saw it, it was in for a striker the other day. Who was the in for? It was in for a fairly big name striker on top of all this lot as well. And I was like, oh shit, Chelsea are trying to do bits this season. Um, Carl, what do you think? Sancho to United almost confirmed if uh, Chelsea go for someone like Coutinho. Yeah, no, it's going to, like you said, they're going to struggle to sign all of them and keep them all happy. Um, I mean, I remember a few months back, Coutinho got linked to us, didn't he? Um, and that was, that's not an ideal. I'd rather him go somewhere else and us take Sancho every day of the week, though, because Sancho's class, isn't he? He just fits, he fits into, it, it, Sancho comes in and he fits straight into what we've got going on here anyway, like young British core, gets on with Rashford, obviously gets on with all the English boys. 
um, and he's just absolutely class. And we get one over on City as well. So it's it's a win win in it. So I'm hoping Coutinho goes there, mate. He's not. He's had a bit of a shit time in Coutinho since he left Liverpool. Obviously, he went to Barca for like mega fucking money. Was it 140 million quid? Smart, yeah. yeah, flopped there pretty much. Didn't get the game. One fancied there. Went to buy and did it right there. But then they didn't want to buy him either. So he's obviously going to go somewhere. Um, and if he goes to Chelsea, mate, then yeah, like you say, happy days for us, isn't it? It's basically now. Well, I wouldn't say it doesn't nail it on, but puts him more towards Manchester than he does London. So yeah, no happy days, mate. Uh, John Sancho, reckon? Uh, I was on the podcast a few weeks back, and uh, I was I got roasted. I, people were I I you don't I don't usually confirm signings, you know what I'm saying? But I I was so strongly believing that Jadon Sancho to Manchester United was just just on. It was on, and I still continue to believe that. I just think it's written in the stars for him to come in, fix the shit out of this number seven curse. Get like Carl said, get on with the other boys. I just think it's so perfect for Jaden Sancho to come in and <laughs> save us from this misery. It's just why did you mention the curse? <laughs> I was hoping we wouldn't talk about it and it wouldn't realize. I read somewhere, I forgot which I forgot which uh, media posted it, but they said something along the lines of how uh, Jaden Sancho was offered this this huge like project. He said, Look, Jaden Sancho, you know, you're young. You're this world. You're this world class English player that's gonna just come in. You can come into Manchester United. We'll give you the the limelight you deserve. You can take the seven. You can lead this team. You could you can play alongside your friends. You can play al- alongside quality. This is what you can be with. And then I think he was really excited uh, at the prospect of that, from what I remember reading. Now, obviously, it's all tabloid and it's all press, so we can't really take too much off of it. But I just feel like it's so perfect. It's so perfect for him to come to Manchester United and really you know take on this project it's just it's it, it just I can't I can't see it not happening Shane what do you think <laughs> what, 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 what. <laughs> that aside doesn't fill me obviously not there, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what what I will say with, with the Jaden Sancho thing um, it's because he is that that signing for me that's why I don't want to kind of commit to it but for me he's, he's that signing that will put us over the edge because I don't think we're that far away but I'd liken the Jaden Sancho signing to the Bruno Fernando signing in terms of how it's made me feel just reading everything um, reading between the lines if you like for me when it was Bruno Fernandez, it was a more of a, a, a case of when and not if and that's really how I feel about Jaden Sancho. But I just I don't want to get excited by it because if it doesn't happen, then um, yeah, it, 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 I just feel he's that signing. So for me, it's a, more of a case of when and not if. But all, everything's pointing in that direction. Um, he's he's Rashford, Rashford's mate. Um, gets along with you know new, numerous lads in the team. Uh, oh, I think Shane's gone. Right in the middle of talking as well. It's paused, so I reckon he's probably got sorry, a call. Sorry, sorry, yeah, I did. Don't know how to <laughs> get rid of that. But yeah, um, I was just, I was just saying. Um, for me, it's a case of when and not if. Put it that way. Yeah, that was that was going to be my thing. Like I was going to say, like it feels a bit like the uh, Bruno Fernandez transfer. Like we need him. We're, we're desperate for him. Obviously, we've been desperate for a fucking winger, right winger, for God knows how many years. Uh, yeah. A bit, a bit like the Fernandez one, we're desperate for a bit of creativity in there, and he's come in and absolutely lit it up. Do you know what I mean? And Sanchez could be uh, Sanchez, Sancho could be one of the, you know, one of the final pieces of the puzzle to actually get us in the conversation for a title. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah. I, I'm desperate, man. I, a bit like you, like when the first, when the Fernandez thing first started, I was like, he's coming, got dead excited, and then it didn't happen. I was like, you fucking <laughs> bastard. And then obviously when he when he did sign, the weeks leading up to sign, he just chilled out. So I'm I'm gonna take that step now with Sancho and just be like well if he comes happy days but if he doesn't we'll just have to deal with it so but yeah we are desperate and we're desperate for a class winger and, and he's he's just got all of the credentials that he fits all the boxes doesn't he yeah he does for this team and for what Ollie's doing with his, with the squad mate he's he's the boy isn't he and oh, yeah no I'm, yeah I'm just going to hold off on the shirt printing though just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just give it a couple more weeks I think he's, he's, he's class. I've said it a few times. Um, he was one of the only players that I saw in academy football um, that I thought was anywhere near a United player. Um, there's there's only been a couple. Um, is it Tommy Doyle that plays for City as well? He's a young playmaker that they've got. He's fucking outrageously good. Um, and the other one was Jaden Sancho. 
um, you'd hold your breath when your guy got on the ball because something was happening. Something was about to happen. He was about to roast someone or he was having a shot. And he played on the left at the time uh, and would just be constantly trying to cut in, constantly trying to uh, get on the ball and make things happen. And invariably, he did make things happen because as you've seen what he's gone on and done in Germany, he's fucking quality. There's no two ways around it. Um, I, I think he's... If Gareth Southgate's smart, he sort of pays attention to what's going on at United and he could potentially evolve that England forward line into being something that revolves around Rashford, Sancho, Greenwood, and, and probably Sterling, hudson Adoy, Tammy Abraham as a, like a bit of a, a collection of players because they're fucking quality, a lot of them. Um, and they're going to be around for a long time. I'm not saying discard Harry Kane or anything just yet, um, obviously. But I would say if you want to look for a way that you could play going into the future, start trying to implement um, the attributes of these lads because I think you'll see um, a positive benefit from it. Carl, I think your mic's wigging out. Yeah. No, it does. Is, is it mine? I uh, don't know, still there. Can you, can you hear me? I hear you, yeah, but there's a there's a scratchiness going on somewhere. Oh, it's gone now. Oh no, it's back. <laughs> Just mute yourself a sec, Shane. Okay. Yeah, it's you, Shane. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and let me unplug this. All right, uh, we carry on anyway. So uh, is that, is that yeah. better? Is that better? Yeah, 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 fine. Yeah. Um, right on this days. Juventus uh, yesterday, uh, 21 years, which well makes me feel old since uh, since that night in Turin. That night in Turin. And I, I hate the way Roy Keane plays it down like, oh, just doing my fucking job. Shut sure, mate. It's probably one of the best individual performances we've seen from anybody. Um, I think it's a good thing, actually, to take the time during lockdown to go and watch full 90-minute matches. Um uh, one of my mates, uh, you can probably all guess, but you, you're all going to get it wrong. One of my mates works at MUTV, uh, and it's not one of the ones in front of the camera um, because you can all guess those two dickheads. But it's one of the ones that works behind the camera. And MUTV have got the full archive footage of well, everything, essentially. Uh, and I've asked him, is there any way that I could get hold of the 1991 Cup Winners' Cup campaign <laughs> just to see? And watch 90 minutes of it because you can get about 30 seconds of that campaign and it's usually the two goals from Mark Hughes and the goal from Koeman in the final. But watching the 90 minutes and seeing the ebb and the flow of, of games of 20, 30 years ago is one of the best things that I've managed to experience during lockdown is having the time because I've got no other football to watch. I'm, I'm reading about a book a day at the moment, just fucking out of necessity. But watching 90 minutes of old school football and realising just how fucking good Roy Keane was. And I don't think anyone needs reminding how fucking good Robbie Van Persie was in that final season uh, of Sir Alex Ferguson. I mean, Jesus Christ. Is there a better way to win a league? And everyone in the comments that's about to say Aguero, we drew the league that day. <laughs> So let's just talk about when you actually win a league. That was a good way to win a league, that wasn't it? Yeah, mate. Same before we start recording. That Robin Van Persie that season, mate, absolutely phenomenal. Someone put a video together every single goal he scored that year, mate, and the, the, the old, like eighty percent of the goals were class. There was not really many tappings. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, oh my God, You're just remembering some of it, just watching some of that. But the, everyone remembers the, the volley at home against Villa. People forget he scored a hat trick in that game. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It's like Jesus, mate! Like what a player Robin Van Persie was. And going back to what you said about um, watching full games, like um, in the night, it, what was I eight? Nine ninety nine? Yeah, I was eight in nine ninety nine. So it's F the FA Cup YouTube channel streamed the semi final of the FA Cup against Arsenal the whole game, and I watched it. You've just wigged out again. It's, it's, my, my connection was going as well. Was it? Keep yeah, talking, yeah. Carl. Uh, yeah, so I, was watching, I watched the, uh, the oh, 1999, 1999 FA Cup semi-final and you realise, like, 
it, it, the, the football in general, the whole game's changed. Like some of the tackles and that that were going in, uh, just the, the, the how good we were that year as well. From all of the one touch football, the ins and outs, the, the movement, the, the movement of the, the how quick it was. Even the players like you, you forget how good David Becker was, especially when you like my you know my age. I was, you know I when I was, don't. No, you don't. But I just because <laughs> I was because I was eight. You don't really like you don't really look at it and go, wow, what a footballer. But then you you watch it back now and compare it to some of the players that we have like playing nowadays. You're like fucking hell. I tell you what, what a team. That's like, like when people say, oh, Delo would be good at right wing. You'd be like, fuck you. I've seen what good right wingers look like. <laughs> I sit in it, and it's just mad, mate. It, it, and like, it, it kills time, and it's nostalgia. Man. I love it. I, some some days I've actually enjoyed lockdown, but others I just want to end up like killing me kids. Like. <laughs> yeah. Shane, what are you missing most about um, football, and what you were yearning for the most about it for to return? Re- realistically, it's, um, it's it's unknown. Unknown. So as you're watching, for example, you could get. Um, us against Watford or whatever the case may be or how City were imperious and we were thinking they were going to smash us or uh, Raheem Sterling going up against wan It's like, it's the unknown, not knowing what's going to happen in any given game where the odds are stacked against you and ultimately, you know, like the 2-0 two, winner against City, for example, it's not that I wasn't confident, but City are the, were this, you know, great big juggernaut at the time, so to speak, and like we have been in the past and it's just to get a win over them in that circumstance, how things have been going for us at the time, it's just not knowing. And when you get in those type of results, those type of performances, because um, I was at that game and I think it was that the last home game that we had as well. Um, so just all those types of things that we, we you missing just the snapshots of something just happening. You, know, you don't know what's coming. For example, McTominay's goal. You, you didn't see that coming. Um, and, Recently, um, just seeing Wambasaka just being unstoppable and not, not being able to get past him. That's that's one of those things as well. And um ultimately I think we we're gonna make the Champions League. I, I do. I think we we're gonna make the Champions League and just not knowing whether or not that's gonna happen anymore um is 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 a big deal as well. So I know they're saying that things might, you know, I don't know. It's just Current circumstance is not gonna it's not gonna happen at any any given time. So unfortunately, just just to not knowing, mate. John, what you're yearning for the most? Oh, just uh, all these like throwback clips on these day clips is just killing me, man. I mean, like just just the thrill, <laughs> the the excitement. Uh, somebody, uh, I know we're kind of diverging off the the whole Roy Keane Roy Keane uh, uh, Robin Van Persie conversation, but you know, lots of people message me about. You know, Korean players in general, and obviously Park Ji Sung, Ji Sung Park is one of the biggest players that people do reach out to me about. And, you know, they ask me, you know, what was one of your most exciting moments? I'll never forget uh, Ji Sung Park's goal against Chelsea in that Champions League um, semi final. It was. Oh, man, you got to remember, we didn't beat Chelsea in that time. It wasn't like this season where we've got Frank Lampard on a lead. Like, exactly. We Getting did not result- beat Chelsea at all. Exactly. Getting a result against Chelsea in that manner with Ji Sung Park scoring a goal like that, getting an assist off Giggsy. I remember I was in the dorms. I was in college. I fucking hated college. I was like miserable. I didn't want to study. I skipped class to watch that game. I sat in the dorms by myself. And when he scored, I screamed so goddamn loud. I punched the table. I was going buck wild. The, the resident assistant, the RA, came in, thought somebody was fighting in here. I was just like, nah, I'm just studying. Just getting excited about studying. I will never forget that. <laughs> to this day, I still feel the emotion. It's just like that. It, I, I crave it more. You know, every single minute of it, every single, every single moment, anywhere. It doesn't have to be Jason Park. It could be Robin Van Percy. It could be Scott McTominay. It could be fucking Alexander Butner. It could be whoever. I just miss it all. Of it. <laughs> fucking what watch now? out, what <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Nick Powell, you give me the whole shebang. I'll take it now. <laughs> I have to go with VAR check on that shit. <laughs> Fucking Alex Butler, man. Oh, oh my days. Right. <laughs> I mean, where do we, where do I go from that? Where do I go from John saying to Mrs. Alexander fucking Butler? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell. Oh, mate. <laughs> Is there one game you could just go back uh, from this season and re-experience? <sighs> It's got to be, uh, it'd probably be the last one. It'd probably be the City game. it have to be. Like, all of the City game, well, apart from the League Cup at home, that was that was quite shit. But yeah, probably the, the, the away games at the Etihad. 
or the home one, the last home one in the league. I don't know, it's tough, isn't it? It's the social aspect of it as well, though, isn't it? Going to football. Massively so, yeah. Massively. I, I fucking love going to the Trafford, mate, and getting a big fucking two pointer and just necking it in about five minutes. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> It's, it's all that. Ah, like, oh, yeah, shit. I ate fucking this. This is wank, mate. You reminded me of like how shit it is now. It's awesome. so, uh, right. I think we'll wrap it up there then before everyone gets too depressed. Let us know in the comments what's the one <laughs> thing missing the most. What's the one thing that's making you yearn the most for football to return? And what's the one thing? In fact, we'll do this. We'll go around everyone here. What's the one thing you're looking forward to the most uh, about when football returns? Uh, Shane, do you want to go first? Yeah, um, literally, I want to see us get Jaden Sancho. That's, that's what it is. I just want to see us get Jaden Sancho uh, because I do look at <laughs> um, Realistically, like I said, it's, it's just that, that feeling, the same thing as Bruno Fernandes. It's a matter of when and not if. So I just want, you know, season, you know, we'll get through, get the Champions League, get to the transfer to some window, get Jaden Sancho. John? Uh, I miss waking up at five in the morning to chat with you guys on both side levels. <laughs>